Welcome to episode 2 of KDAL Weekly Video, hosted by Anastasia Yuglova. Tom Palmer, Vice President for International Programs, has been the driving force behind Cato's foreign language websites, including Cato.ru in Russian and Lamp of Liberty, Cato's Arabic website. He presented a paper, Open Societies, Global Markets and the Bourgeois Virtue, at a recent Cato conference on what should be a culture of enterprise in an age of globalization. The paper can be accessed on the Cato Institute website. And now, a few excerpts from his speech. Globalization, which is one of those terms that's really well defined, usually means all the things you like or all the things you don't like. Uh, when you debate uh, anti-globalization activists and you ask them to define what they mean, they say, well, by globalization, I mean war, disease, poverty, and mosquitoes. I'm against all those things, too. So I have a non-moralized operational definition, which is the diminution or elimination of restrictions on exchange across political borders. Moreover, and this is very important and commonly misunderstood, the increasing prosperity in a globalized market economy of one nation is good for the people in the neighboring countries, or at least in those other countries with whom they produce. This is one of the core insights of Jean-Baptiste Say, and it would be a good thing if political economists and people in the foreign policy studies understood this better. Lou Dobbs does not. We're going to talk about a total ignoramus. Lou Dobbs thinks it's bad for Americans if Canadians become richer. It's good for Americans if Canadians become richer. They can buy more of your stuff, or they can pay a higher price for it if they have more things with which to exchange. <coughs> so when you have a global market, the prosperity of one country is to the benefit of the others, not to their detriment. There's not a zero-sum game in that regard. So globalization is just another word for the freedom of enterprise extended across the accidents of political boundaries. It represents the extension of the market, and it's governed by principles no different from those that govern enterprise within boundaries. There's nothing special about international trade that is not also true about domestic trade, except insofar as political bodies have introduced obstacles, whether through international finance mechanisms or others. What about the relationship between enterprise and culture? Well, very importantly, contrary to those who assert that free enterprise is amoral or even immoral, enterprise requires respect for other people. It is the fundamental building block. You respect that another person has claims. If you see something you want, you could just go and take it. But in markets, we don't do that. Why? We respect the rights of the other person. Exchange presupposes respect for justice. Otherwise, just take the stuff that you want. But not merely justice. Markets also require another stage in the emergence of human consciousness. And that is the ability to take into account not only the rights, but the desires, the aspirations of other people. They're called customers. We often hear that enterprise promotes greed. I disagree. It neither promotes nor dampens selfishness or greed. We've heard this before. Uh, there was a great deal of greediness among bureaucrats, among Soviet apparatchiks, and so on. Greed is a fairly common feature. What's remarkable is that the way you satisfy it in a market is by serving other people, not by taking from them or exploiting them, but by serving them and offering them what they want. Thank you for watching Cato Weekly Video. The Cato Institute is a nonprofit organization. For more information or to find out how to give to Cato, please visit www.cato.org.